Hi guys, and welcome back to Mystic Mamas. I'm Dakota, your host, and today we have a very special guest on our podcast. Her name is Kelsey Morgan. She is a movement healer certified in somatic activated healing, a trauma-informed practitioner, a artist, a podcaster, and someone I've grown to actually know in the past couple of weeks. Her purpose in life is to teach others how to transmute their darkness to embody soul liberation. So I actually met Kelsey through a somatic dance therapy class that I took with Saudi Simone. I found him on Instagram and it was just like so amazing because afterwards she talked on, um, we kind of had like a moment to converse with him and she came on and gave her beautiful insight and I just felt so drawn to her. And so I slid into her DMs on Instagram and now we are here. So thank you so much, Kelsey, for being here. I appreciate you and I'm excited to pick your brain today. Hi, yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm here for it. I'm here for all the brain picking. I love to talk about this stuff and I'm open to it. And that moment on the class, um, because sometimes Saw doesn't invite people on. He'll say, hey, does anyone have questions? But that day he, he didn't offer. I was just like, I'm going to raise my hand because I feel like I'm supposed to talk. And then Love that's that. when you felt drawn to me and then slid into my DM. So meant to be. No, literally divine timing. I love it. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this work. So I have been drawn to helping people in some shape or form ever since like I was trying to figure out what the heck to do with my life because I hated everything in school. I didn't mm -hmm. all the core subjects except art. I was like, I hate this and I hate my life. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um, and then my journey actually started out as an art therapist. And I loved doing that. I loved working with people in their depths, their trauma, unconscious mind, all of that, and bringing it up through the art. But then it hit a point where it wasn't enough for me. I could feel and sense that emotions and their what they were going through was still stuck in their body. And I didn't know how to access that or unlock it. I kind of, mm. I was on my own intuitive path of doing that with somatic movement, but I didn't know enough to guide other people. Um, and then one night, literally just crying in my room of like, I don't know what to do. I just know I need to be a healer, but what does that mean? And then on my phone, an ad for teacher training for somatic activated healing popped up like that moment of just the surrender of, I don't know what to do, I, but I know I need a change in how I'm helping people. And then it was universe said, here you go. Yeah, I love that you felt like the drawn to it before you saw it. And then it was like the universe saying like, here you go. Here's your silver platter. And now it's up to you to take it. You know what I mean? It's such mm -hmm. a beautiful story. And she kind of told me this already. So I've listened to this portion of it. And I just feel like you were meant to do this work. And what I've learned from you, it definitely feels that way as well. So yeah, thank you for what you're doing in the world. Um, and then just because I'm sure not a lot of people know what it is. What is somatic activated healing um, or the saw method? Yes. So that is a practice that combines five, four or five different healing modalities into one. And that's what creates the saw method. And saw method is short for somatic activated healing, but it combines meditation, breath work, mantras, somatic movement, and a static dance. And all of those are all sectioned together in a, in a segment or a class every time. And it's that structure that creates um, the method. Yeah. So let's actually go into that structure. Can you tell us like kind of how a class is structured and then the benefits of each portion of that class? Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's an yeah. intentional opening and closing. So with those five modalities, they're placed in a specific order. Um, you can change it up a little bit. That's like up to the practitioner as well, but it's to... Um, ease you into it and like you hit a peak like if you if you've ever been to an ecstatic dance event it kind of follows that structure like you're tuning into the body you get to the peak you're here um and you have the moment of like really opening and surrendering if you allow yourself to go there and then you're closing again um, but with the meditation that helps you be in stillness with your body and being the practice of calming the mind and it's shorter meditations, uh, 
it can it varies i'm gonna say that a Mm -hmm. lot because it is up to um it depends on how long you've been in the practice because if you're new i'm gonna keep it shorter because that's kind to the body if you're not used to being in your body but if you've Mm -hmm. been with me a while i'm gonna stretch your capacity more and more with that meditation with that stillness because that can be the most intimidating part is to be in your body and stillness so that is Mm -hmm. something to really evaluate and then the breath work brings you back to the present moment and releasing, uh, starting to release the emotional baggage, but it pulls you in and helps you drop the stories more if the meditation is not enough. And then the somatic movement is tapping into certain energy points within the body that where emotions are stored, like there's specific movements for specific emotions. And that is something only the practitioner knows, but we guide you through that. And then the Mm. static movement is your opportunity to be in your body, freely moving, letting that intuitive guidance come through, letting go of control more. And then the mantras come in and bring in like a new vocabulary and new declaration and uh, better self-talk and something that you can keep with you throughout the day as well. Because a lot of times there is, it kind of brings in that little like reprogramming moment with new Mm -hmm. things to say, a new story to write because we get so caught up in old stories and in the mind. So then we're bringing in different opportunities there. Yeah. Just in my experience, the portion where you're doing movement to mantra, that was so like healing for me. I cried the very first time I did that class with Saw and I was just like, wow, this is so healing because I've done, I guess, a little bit of ecstatic dance. You could say I'm just like a freestyle shuffler. So that's like, you know, kind of like ecstatic dancing in in your own sense if you want to go there. But uh, but yeah, it was just very healing. And I was like so drawn to it after that because now, you know what? Let's actually ask you, the professional, uh, <laughs> what would you say the, that ecstatic dancing by itself and the saw method, like what is the difference? The ecstatic dance, there's no structure, period, mm-hmm. as far mm-hmm. as your own guidance because I've been to those events before And so they set an intention at the beginning of like, hey, this is your moment. This is this is you and your dance floor and your healing and let it be whatever it's meant to be. But when you're in it, uh, because what the stuff that I've gone to, it's like four hours long. So it is a long Mm -hmm. static event, but you're you're quiet. There's actually a, a rule is no talking. And Mm. if you are wanting to engage with someone else, there's this nonverbal communication. If you want to dance with someone and it's not in a, your normal club dancing, it's like you're mirroring each other and moving Mm. with it and being in sync, but there's no specific moves given to you. There's no instruction. There's no, nothing like that. But with the aesthetic, with the saw method, I'm here as the guide through every part of the class. And you gotcha. always hear my voice. You always hear instruction. And and when there's moments when I'm not giving instruction, I'm telling you that I'm about to be quiet for however many minutes. Mm, okay. I love that. You know, that's crazy because I, I mean, I keep relating it to my experience, but just with shuffling, that's kind of how it is on the dance floor. Like you guys aren't shaking your booties on each other kind yeah. of <laughs> club scene, but you are like mirroring each other actually is what it, what we call it. And mm. it's when you are... Um, doing your like foundational movements at the same time, kind of like similar. It doesn't actually have to be the exact same movement, but you're going back and forth and you're mirroring each other is what it's called essentially. So I love that. I feel like the more I learn about, um, yeah, just about dance therapy in general, the more I understand that I've been doing it for so long and I just didn't understand that I was doing it, you know? That was exactly my thought. Cause then once I was in the deep study for the certification process, except for learning Saw's moves that he created for the specific somatic move for the specific emotion. Mm -hmm. Other than that was new to me, obviously, because that's something he created. But all the other stuff that we were learning, it was, it just continuously blew my mind because I, I did this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this. I've been doing this intuitively for my own healing. I've been moving my body in this way or putting Mm. songs on to help me tap in deeper into an emotion or something that I feel stuck. And I can't, I can't just sit and do art anymore. It's not enough. Like it gets you to a point. And that's with all any traditional therapy, in my opinion, it'll get you to a point, but then it doesn't 
unlock the things in your body because it's more mind based. And then that's when I intuitively would just go to movement. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you that question about the difference between talk therapy and um, what you're doing now. And so I feel like you just answered that. And I love that. Um, I definitely feel like even when it comes to music, I've had moments where uh, maybe I'm going through some really deep healing and I'll play a song in the car and I'll sing it and I'll just start bawling my eyes out. But if I'm just listening to it and like driving, it's a different kind of like feeling, you know, but when I'm like releasing out of this like throat chakra, it allows me to like release the emotions with it, you know? And that's what's so important with the mantras too, because how mm-hmm. I cultivate the mantras, I mean, every, everything is super intentional and even, even the playlist, I'm listening to the words and the lyrics and making sure it's um, tuning into the, the intention that I'm setting for the practice. And then I'm feeling into the song with the somatic move that I want to put with that song. And then the mantra of how can this mantra fit with the song and the movement? Mm. So then when I'm asking you to speak and through your throat chakra, a lot of times if that, if you haven't been cracked open yet when you get to that then you're like oh my gosh and it just starts pouring and in any way pleasant or or unpleasant because that's the thing too is this we are tapping into all that is it's Mm -hmm. not just it's not just trauma focused but it's also not just love and light focused it's all of it yeah i love that it's um we've talked about this before but it's like not spiritual bypassing but definitely going deep and Um, I love whenever you mention to let go of the stories, because I feel like a lot of the times we want to analyze what's going on within our body and then it takes us out of the body. And you're like, why am I feeling this? And where is it coming from? Oh, is it from this past trauma or this past trauma? But it's like within the somatic activated healing, you're just like releasing and allowing it to be there and like accepting it. And I just absolutely love that. I feel like that's a big thing that, um, moved me to cry and release that way because I was just like, wow, this is, this has been stuck in me for so long. And I've never even realized, don't know where it's coming from specifically, but I love that it's here. You know what I mean? Yes. And that is actually the key point of the difference between therapy and somatic activated healing. Mm. That is something that saw drills into all the practitioners is drop the story, be with the feeling. And then me hearing that as a trained therapist, my brain glitched completely because Mm. I was trained for eight years to be with the story, to listen to people's story, to listen to what's in Mm -hmm. their mind, what is just all of this swirling sensation. And it does help to a point, but it's, it's so minuscule because what's going on in the mind compared to the feelings and the energy, there's so much more on the other side of that. And so then learning and embodying what does that truly mean? Because I knew it to an extent, but again, not enough to bring other people to it. So that's why mm-hmm. I knew like, I need to get certified. I need deeper study to extend this beyond my own knowing. And that dropping the story and being with the feeling it is, it's the story is enough when you get to name it. And that's, that's all we need. That's the importance of I'll listen to people talk and uh, like a bit of their story. And then I'm bringing them back to naming, to identifying what is the feeling attached to that? Because the story doesn't matter. It's the feeling that matters. Mm. And then, okay, now let's create segments around that and unlock the feeling. Because then then the story doesn't matter. Once you've mm-hmm. been with the energetic charge of the emotion and you allow it to transmute, the story just fizzles away. I love that. That is so deep. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me take a moment for that. But no, that was so great. <laughs> Um, so someone maybe that is doing talk therapy now or just are in their spiritual journey and haven't tried somatic activated healing, what is a way that they can step into that? Like a very simple way, maybe not taking a whole class, but yeah, what is small steps that they can do now? Yeah. One thing before I dive into that, it Mm -hmm. is both, like it is great to couple both. Like if you feel that you still need therapy, great. But then add in, like talk to your therapist about somatic work and then where Mm -hmm. you can add that in. And then when you feel, because people go in phases with help and mentors and therapists. And then when you when you feel yourself needing to move on to something different, follow that pool. But somatic activated healing and therapy, great, great combination, like not completely knocking therapy here. I just Mm -hmm. wanted to put that out there. But with starting. 
I mean, there's so many uh, options out there now, and this is continuing to grow. And there's a lot of practitioners and most of them are virtual. So for me, I mean, I have a free option every Thursday and like start, I mean, I know that's a full class. It's kind of Mm -hmm. any, most practitioners, they're going to be offering a full class. But if, even if you don't feel comfortable with a full class, just the shake, like shaking your body, putting on a song Mm -hmm. and shaking your body to it, for the whole song. And if you get in a practice and routine for that, that's going to change your life because you're regulating your nervous system. Perfect. Um, I love that actually. And you know, what's funny. I've been thinking about this question like, Oh, how could you maybe some like ecstatic dancing on your own would also be another way. Would you say? Yes. Yeah. So that's how I actually was getting into it. Um, you know, the coach Taylor Simpson, I don't, but I'll look them up. <laughs> okay, so she I I did I followed her work for a while and I was in some of her programs and she she called it frequency dancing and it's 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 a static dancing. So I didn't mm. know what that was, but she would just put on a song and freely dance to it and mm. allow yourself and she would say, you know, at least 10 minutes. And so mm. it, that's, you know, at least two songs and I would do that and to get myself out of a funk. And then I noticed I would do that just to be with the feeling more, but not knowing that's what I was doing. So that's putting on a song and shaking for the whole song, just one song or putting on a couple songs and then allowing yourself to freely move around and dance around. That's like a great way to start and be with somatic movement. Love that. And guys, if you don't know what uh, somatic shaking is, it's literally just shaking your body, like moving your head fast, moving your hands fast. If you're seeing, you can kind of, if you're watching the video, you can see me shake my hands, shake your legs out. Um, Also, just know that you can't do it wrong. So get out of your head there and just, you know, move how your body feels it wants to move. Um, Because I feel like in the beginning, I'm like, okay, I have to make sure I'm doing it right. And how do you start? And how do you end? And that's, that's you in the head. The, yeah, that's not the purpose. Like once you get started, you know that it doesn't matter how you're moving. Just like listen to what your body wants, you know. And that's exactly it because you don't have to be a dancer or any experience mm-hmm. in that. This is not about that at all. It's especially within a class like you. I'm guiding you how to move your body most of the time. So you don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, I love that. Um, let's see. And I guess you kind of answered this one already. So we'll skip on to the next one. What is one of your biggest breakthroughs that you've had doing the somatic activating tailing? Biggest breakthrough. There's been a lot, but the one that's immediately <laughs> coming to mind, cause it's a, it's a big aha moment. And I actually shared it on Saw's class was I've noticed that I'm not journaling as much anymore. Mm. And I've been in the practice for a year now, over a year. And I've been in deep trauma work since 2017. A lot of that was surrounded with journaling. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed, I look back, like I've kept all my journals and all my sketchbooks. I think I will. It's just such a great thing to look back on and see the evolution. Mm -hmm. Like it's documented, like, whoa, that was my mindset. And here it is now, like that, like Mm -hmm so proud. (laughs) But noticing now the way I journal, I'm not journaling about the story anymore. Mm. I am just so zoned in and tapped into, it's like a, I don't even know what word to describe it, but like a detective, like I can just see and sense of something happens in my outer world. Okay. Well, I don't need to victimize it in that way. or play the blame game on anything, even if it's something that is upsetting or if someone messed up, like I can still, I'll still address the situation, but I don't need to be in my journal now and like venting about it. Mm. I get curious of like, well, what was my feeling during that situation? Now let me just go do a somatic practice with that feeling. And then Mm. that's enough. And I feel held and I don't, and I'm not really journaling anymore. Yeah, I love that. And I feel like often in the spiritual community, we see people um, like doing all of the things, right? In the morning, they meditate and then they go into journaling. Then maybe they do some like, I don't know, somatic dancing. They do it all. And and then we feel like we have to do it all in order to be quote unquote spiritual. And when we don't do it, then we feel like we're not, I guess, enough, you know, at the deep core root of it. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you're saying that like, it's okay that you're not doing those 
past things anymore because it's not bringing you the insight that now what you're doing does, you know? Yeah. And how I'll still write, but it's not because I'll create an art piece and then I'll write about it. So then Mm -hmm. I'm remembering what I'm saying or something amazing happens. Like I liked doing that kind of thing, but yeah, I'm not journaling in that way anymore. Um, And then just other breakthroughs that would probably be of value to share is when a huge feeling overcomes me and it can still happen to this day of just utter despair, grief, shame, and Mm. wanting it to end or feeling like, what is this ever going to end? Or like, have haven't I healed enough? Why do I still mm. feel like this? Or why does this still happen? But then I'm always reminded that it's temporary. Mm. And then when I allow myself to fully drop into that feeling and let it consume me, because I know it's a visitor and I know it's my friend. That's a hard thing. That's a hard pill to swallow that all these feelings are visitors and friends and they're here to just teach us something and to show something. And mm. Right now, actually, I'm really sitting with the sensations of scarcity, and that's a deep shadow that I didn't even realize was untouched. And that happens too, because healing is a spiral. It doesn't matter like how evolved you are. There's there's rocks left on turn, and then if you're just committed to being on the journey, like it all gets to be okay. But sitting with scarcity, I because I'm so versed and devoted to healing and somatic work, it just took a couple days of being with it and feeling so lost and distraught, but then allowing the feeling to flow through me to then come back to love. I'm not saying it's still, it's not fully pleasant right now, yeah. but I'm, I'm holding it and nurturing it in love. And that's what somatic work teaches you to do of like these dark parts of yourself and these feel unpleasant feelings in these big waves, you learn how to face it and recognize it and hold it in love and like, okay, what do you need from me? How can I hold you? How can I nurture you? And then because of that, and then shining a light on it, I get to, or the feeling gets to transmute into something different, into something that is of service. Like scarcity Mm -hmm. can be a teacher and I've noted, or all feelings can be a teacher, but right now scarcity is my teacher. Um, Mm -hmm. In scarcity, I've been talking to it and saying like, oh, wow, thank you for showing me where I need to dive deeper into devotion of self-love because there's a lot of shame attached to it. And so then for me, like the opposite of shame is love. And so I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. you're showing me where I am still needing some love in my life and needing some self-love. So thank you. And if you never would have shown yourself, if if I never would have felt these feelings, I never would have dropped into deeper devotion of self-love. It just wouldn't have happened. Mm. And like those big breakthroughs with somatic work, when you allow yourself to feel it and go there, Mm. it's a lot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that you um, continuously say thank you to these feelings because then I, I think that whenever you're saying thank you, it truly means like, I accept you for being here. Thank you for giving me and bringing me this gift. And yeah, it's just a beautiful practice that I feel like you're implementing daily. And also I did it. I think you said, I'm pretty sure you said thank you within your class that I took with you too. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Um, I know I'm speaking for Danielle here, but she had told me because we also did the class together. It was online. So obviously not together together, but you guys know what we mean. (laughs) Um, And she was saying just like that she was getting a little frustrated because the baby was taking her out of like being concentrated with the class. And so instead of getting or she, you know, allowing the frustration to come up, she would. And then just she would just say thank you. And it was something that really helped her like moved through it. And I feel like that's so beautiful because it was something I implemented whenever I took your class as well. I just kept trying to be like, okay, thank you. Thank you for being here. Like, um, cause I wanted to be fully immersed, right? Like that's, I feel like when your concentration is fully within the, um, somatic activating class, you're able to like really release and let go. And, and I felt like some things were coming up for me, but I wasn't able to like fully release it until I was like, okay, thank you for being here. Like, thank you to my baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's beautiful. I also feel like oftentimes um, we are taught as we're younger to just shove down these feelings or we are told that they're not okay to have. And so that's why we are 
distracting ourselves maybe with social media or whatever else it may be. And so I love that just like somatic dancing and healing is just, yeah, just a way to really move those stuck emotions. Um, And that's what creates the polarity in the world is through that programming of this is labeled good and this is labeled bad. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. this practice, it brings you back to neutrality. Like it just is, it's a feeling and feel it. It's not good. It's not bad. And all of it is working together to bring you back into your heart space and to bring you back into your center, into your truth, all of Mm. it. And that's like a, that's a deep, deep core of like value of mine of all situations and all feelings is working together um, to bring you back home to yourself. And that's where I say a lot of the times too, like my shadows always want to lift me up. They have always wanted to lift me up. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that because a lot of times we want to hide our shadows, right? We think that they're the worst quote unquote part of us when really like they they just want to be loved, seen, heard, and understood just like every other emotion. And so, yeah, I absolutely love that. Thank and you And they're the thing holding, quote unquote, holding you back. So until yeah. you do give it love, it's going to like you're sabotaging yourself and it wants to not do that. It wants to see you thrive, but you have to face it. Mm, yeah you gotta feel it to heal it is Mm -hmm. kind of what they say right you gotta (laughs) go through it to get to the other side type of situation and I feel like this is the epitome of like what we're talking about in the spiritual community when we say this is like you literally have to feel your feelings I feel like in the past I was thinking I was doing that and now that I'm actually embodying what I'm doing and taking actions to um yeah do more like uh, tools and regulations in order to move those feelings out, I feel more in alignment with what I'm doing. And so, yeah, this stuff has been really healing for me, guys. And just the couple of classes that I've done have shifted my mindset so much, I feel like, that I want to keep doing it again and again, because I know that the more I do it, the more um, healed, I guess I would feel. But I kind of want to go back to that, that you said you were like, oh, but even though I'm healed, it keeps coming up. I think in the past, I used to feel like once I am healed, it won't ever come up again, right? Like I'm healed. It it shouldn't come up. Why am I still feeling this? And then I would shame myself and it would go in the cycle of like shaming, compassion, shaming, compassion, still deal with this. not saying I'm past this, still currently in this, but I want you guys to know that healing is a forever process. Like it is a a process in your journey. It's not something that you're going to fully be healed from and never have to deal with it again. And I, yeah, I just feel like this, these type of practices though, do help you like move forward. Would you say that you feel like within your healing, you do feel like as more time goes on and you're doing these practices, do you feel like the healing that maybe keeps coming up is less and less? Does that make sense? Yes. Um, both. It's a thing, yeah. like the scarcity thing. Oh, man, that just ripped the rug out from underneath me. I felt like I'm doing shadow work for the very first time again. I'm like, what is this? But mm. for the most part, yeah, like when hardship comes along, I I know how to move with it and it just – it doesn't last as long. I can move through the density and I feel um, I feel lighter as a result mm-hmm. at, at the end of it all. And the thing is, is, yeah, you're never going to be healed, duh. Like mm-hmm. the, with that ED at the end, like that's, I don't <laughs> yeah. know, good luck. If you let me know if that happens, because like we need yeah. to be friends or something, <laughs> because that's just not it. And I think that's the misconception, especially mm. within the spirituality community, they like saying that word. And it's just, Mm. for me, I continuously learn how to feel more free. And that's what Mm. it is because we're releasing the density, we're releasing the baggage. We allow it to pass through us instead of it being stuck and holding on. And because these Mm. waves that always cycle around and deeper layers of, of healing it gets to be possible because you're in a constant state of feeling and letting go. And that's Mm -hmm. why your capacity grows, your resilience grows, and you feel more free as a result. And like I can, things happen and it's a a lot of stuff, even just like a few years ago, now it's no big deal. Like, okay, I just Mm -hmm. 
let me let me feel this and then I can move on with my life. And that's that's way more freedom to me instead of someone that is refuses to to do that or to face themselves, something can happen in their life and it really just take them out or they just are stuck in it for a while. And I'm not talking like trauma and big T trauma. That's a whole different thing. It's just like, I'm talking about inconveniences in life or like direction, directional change. Like that can like take people out and it doesn't have to. Big T trauma is going to take anybody out, but (laughs) yeah. For sure. No, I, that's kind of what I've been thinking about lately is like, no, it's not that it never comes up again. We just learn to deal with it better. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I kept hearing that within my like grieving journey whenever my dad passed. And I'm starting to like, feel like they're very similar. Grief is a point where like, no, you're never not going to feel like that grieving process within your, for me, it's a family member or someone close to you. However, you learn to move through it easier. Like it, it gets easier with time, quote unquote quote unquote, but really it just gets easier as you work through those emotions and feelings. And I feel like they're very similar. It is. I was just thinking about this. Because yeah. you build, it's because you build that resilience. Like it doesn't, mm. life doesn't get easier. You just get better. You get stronger. And that's yeah. how it, that's how it rolls. There's this lovely passage or quote with grief. Um, I don't remember who said it, but it talks about the concept of maybe the longer that I feel and I sit with grief, it doesn't actually change, Mm -hmm. but it changes from it's no longer, it's hands are no longer wrapped around my throat. Now we're walking hand on hand on this path Mm -hmm. together. Mm, That is so deep. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this is giving me so much realization as to why, like, I feel like throughout my immediate family and who was really like extremely affected from my dad passing, I feel like I've done the most like healing. And so maybe it's easier for me to have the conversations that could be hard. Cause I think a lot of the time we shove it down, right? Like our family doesn't want to talk about it or bring it up. Cause once we do, we cry. And we've always kind of been taught in my family, like it's okay to cry, but at the same time, like don't cry too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, that's just crazy how much like it's all connected, right? (laughs) It is all connected. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, grief is beautiful. It is so beautiful. It shows me the depths of my love. And the Mm. more I allow myself to feel grief, the more I allow joy and love to enter my life. Because that's Mm. also a core belief of mine as well. And within like the somatic activated healing training is you, if you do not allow yourself to feel the unpleasant feelings of life, you're not going to allow yourself to feel the pleasant feelings of life. Because if you shut yourself off, to hardship and numb yourself out, then you're numb. You're just numb, period. Then you're not going to really feel anything. Not that it's completely incapable, but you're not going to be feeling anything. And that's the risk. And that's the exchange. That's the, that's the contract and the agreement. If you want to feel compassion, gratitude, love, joy, courage, peace. Okay, Mm -hmm. great best friends with shame, anger, despair. <laughs> like, those are your lessons. Like those, like those walk hand in hand. You have to be willing to feel both if you want to f- want to have this great life of actual peace. Um, Cause there's something, I used to work at a residential facility. And so I would talk about this a lot and they would just blow their mind. But I, I wouldn't really talk about happiness as an emotion. I mean, I know mm-hmm. it exists and it's there, but like that's mm-hmm. not something that we would work with and with the art and stuff. But I said, uh, to me, happiness is actually accepting all of it. Mm. It's not just happiness as this stationary thing. And like mm-hmm. there's all these other emotions and things, but then if you actually want to reach happiness, it's the acceptance and the willingness to feel all that is. Yeah. The, whenever you said numbness, I was like, mm-hmm. damn, that's such a good way to look at it because you can't just numb one part of your life and not be numb to the other side. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's crazy. And maybe that's um, like, this is just from my brain, right? My thoughts don't take this for anything, guys. But like, <laughs> maybe that's why people are depressed and stuff. Because yeah. it's like they want to feel one emotion so badly, but they don't want to feel this one. And so now they're just numb to it all. Mm-hmm. Then it makes them go into the cycle, which I mean, I've been there before. So Actually, that makes so much sense. I'm like having all these realizations within our talking and I love it. Um, (laughs) It's just some deep shit though. Yeah, (laughs) I love it. Um, 
I also feel like this relates to, we were just talking about this, but motherhood, because there's a duality in motherhood. Most definitely. I feel like sometimes, you know, I look at my kid and I'm like, oh my God, I've never felt a love like this in my whole entire life. This is amazing. But then I have moments where I'm like, fuck, this shit is hard and tough and I don't want to be here. And like, so it's like, I can't have one without the other. And if I've known duality, it's the most I've ever actually known it is now. Like being a mother is, yeah. It's just like, you literally can't have one without the other within this journey and process. So love that you said that. And now it's making me feel like, okay, I need to start feeling my emotions even more than what I feel like I'm doing. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I'm not a mother, but I can Mm -hmm. imagine with that of like, you it's, there's less room for escapism because you have this Mm -hmm. child in Mm -hmm. front of you at all times now. And you have a responsibility and a duty. And it's like a constant reflection of if you're not showing up for that. And it's less, you have less leeway for escapism because then you'll see the direct result of it within your child and how, Mm. um, how they grow up. Yeah. And how they will act out at times too. Like maybe they need a little extra love and so they're acting out, but you've been busy working on your business. You know what I mean? So it's like, it is a direct reflection. You are completely right. You are so amazing. Literally, you're (laughs) giving me so much insight into my own life. Um, and I'm sure so many people who are listening as well. So thank you. Um, and let's see, what would be a good affirmation that you could give our listeners if they're stepping into this journey of somatic activated healing? Yeah, the one I give myself, it's like a little two parter. I mean, keep going Mm -hmm. is one. And then the like second part to that is, and what I always tell myself when I'm hitting the but why, like why, how much is left or, you know, when does it get better is what's the Mm. alternative? Mm. I I ask myself that a lot. What's the alternative? Because if I stop now, this is all it's ever going to be. And if I completely stop, I already, now I know too much. Yeah. So there's a difference of blissful (laughs) ignorance and like, cool. Mm -hmm. But then now I know too much and I start to revert and I'm derailing everything that I've done. Even if, what if life doesn't get quote unquote better? What's the alternative though? Mm -hmm. If I were to stop, I already know how life was and I don't want to do that. So keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Actually, you said something and I'm forgetting where my head was at. Um, What's the alternative? Something, okay, whatever. Maybe it'll come up later. But another thing that, um, well, one that I feel like was really good was I was hoping to see you yesterday in the class that he had, um, but he had this really beautiful, I guess, you know, affirmation mantra. And he said, I'm safe in my body. Mm-hmm. And I love that too, because I feel like, you know, we run away from these feelings because we're scared of feeling them when it's like, I'm safe here. Like, this is my body. I'm safe. Like, Nothing can harm me here other than myself, I guess. Right. But yeah. But you have to get to that point of believing that. Yeah, that's true. So what is the alternative is a good one. And then you also said, what was the first one? I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Of course. Right. Keep going. (laughs) Love that. Because it's a practice. Um, It's a practice. It's not a one and done situation. Mm -hmm. And if you're not seeing the results of what your human mind expected, just keep going. Because you'll notice it over time. And usually it's small wins that add up to a whole new life. Mm, Okay, now I remember what I was going to say. You were talking about how like, you know too much. And so yeah, you could be like, um, kind of ignorant to it all. But it's like, you already know too much. You can't be ignorant to it all now. Like, sometimes there are moments where D and I will talk about this. um, And we'll be like, I just wish I didn't know all this information. Because sometimes it's like, it can be debilitating. You know what I mean? If, if you allow it to be. And sometimes, you know, I'm still working through it. So it is for me. And, and then I'm like, oh, why, why? Cause it's like, for me, it's a constant shame and blame situation where it's like, I know to do better and I'm not doing better. And then I'm trying to have compassion, but then I'm shaming and it's just like a constant cycle. And so like, sometimes that can be debilitating for me. Cause it's like, I want to do better. I want to uplift, you know, consciousness within the world, consciousness around my family and everything like that. But sometimes it's like, I can't get out of my own way. You know what I mean? Oh, froze a little bit. What were you saying? Yeah, sometimes I what? I like, I can't get out of my own way is what I feel like, mm-hmm. but it's like, I, then I have to, 
because I know all this information and I know what to do. So it's like, just pick yourself back up and keep going. Yeah. So. Yeah. What centers me in that when it's like the overwhelm or why do I know all this and I want to do all of these things? It's just, uh, you focus on yourself first because that's when you come back to you in the centering of that healing, then you trust that it gets to radiate out from there. Mm. Yeah. You're so right. I love that. Thank you. And the last and final question, but it's very important. <laughs> Where can people find you and connect with you? You can find me on Instagram at creating light underscore uh, the podcast creating light with Kelsey, but that's the brand name creating light. So that that's everywhere. Uh, if you search things and then just light fixtures come up, just add the like creating light with Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> then I will come up everywhere. Uh, but yeah, Instagram uh, podcast is a little sporadic since I started doing my free classes once a week. That's taken more of the priority than the podcast, but that's still around. That's still a passion comes in waves mm. and phases of that. Uh, but yeah, I have the once a week free class that's live and I'm finagling some things around that to have more um, access or like a little mini subscription option for people so they can have the replays longer um, and experience more of my coaching. And uh, so that's going to be, I don't know when this is releasing, but that's going to be ready by March 1st. And then uh, what else? I have like a lot of I've been in a major restructuring phase because all of 2023 was letting go of the mm -hmm. art therapist title identity and like fully turning everything around while I was getting certified at the same time. So it's been a lot of what yeah. is life and like uh, entering a complete new reality. But yeah, I'm open for one-on-one -on -one work too. Uh, all that stuff is on my Instagram and the link tree. And then I have like little bundles that I'm creating. I have the Leap of Faith bundle actually, which is great. Right now it's only $33, but as I'm upgrading it, then it will rise again um, March 1st as well. And those bundles, like if you get it whenever you get it, you'll get free access to any time I upgrade it. So it's not like I'm going to be constantly trying to upcharge you or things like that. Once you get it, you're locked in and have all the cool things. <laughs> I love that bundle so much because I've created, I've done so many leaps of faith. That's like almost a walk in the park now for me. So I can, I feel that's a big, a big calling of mine to guide people in that and talk to them about it and show them the energetics with it, with the saw method to get people to actually take a leap of faith. And what do you do when you're in the oh shit moment of afterwards and all of that? But yeah, those are the things, free class, little membership option working one-on-one -on -one and leap of faith bundle currently and podcast. Yeah. And podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, your podcast is so good. I listened to uh, her latest episode and honestly, just, just the way you speak and hold yourself is so beautiful. I really like admire it. So thank, thank you. you for that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yes, absolutely. And guys, all of her information will be in the show notes so you can find that there. And yeah, thank you so much, Kelsey, for coming on and giving us all your insight. We love you. We thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in and showing up for yourself. Y'all have a good day.